would like uh, to share you the concept how one can utilize science in identifying issues and solutions that may minimize the impact on halal food. So, before I start, I'd like to remind myself and everybody when we talk about halal concept, it's not restricted to what we eat and drink. It's usually extended to what we see, hear, talk, and wear. But it's all right today we are talking about halal food, we could make or restrict our halal concept to what we drink and eat. Now from Sharia point of view, when you talk about drinking and eating, in general we could say we are allowed to drink anything as long as it is healthy and harmless, with the exception of blood and alcohol. Similarly for eating, we are allowed to eat everything as long as it is healthy and harmless, which include fruits and vegetables with the exception of dead meat or meat which is coming from animal which is meat dependent and here more particularly we talk about pork. Now, if we are allowed to go a little back to the past, our mother used to prepare food from A to Z. So the issue of halal was really not a big issue for us. And probably one of the first so-called processed food entered our kitchen is made. And at that time when we used to see there is a chicken picture and some American in Arabic, so for us the issue of halal was really not a big concern. But for us as a human, it's in our nature to innovate things. That's why we would like always to develop every method and tools which is around us. Because we would like to make our life more exciting, less boring, and this of course led to a revolution in all aspects of science, and food processing is part of it, and that's why halal concept is not anymore limited to food, it's extended to pharmaceutical drugs, cosmetics, and some others. Now, let's take the example of an apple. There is a general quote which says that if you take an apple a day, it keeps you a doctor away. When we ingest or when we eat an apple, one bite of an apple basically contains a list of chemicals. And if you look at this list, you will find certain chemicals which might be surprising. For example, when we talk about acetone, it's a solvent which is basically used to remove the nail polish, formaldehyde, which is a carcinogenic compound, methanol, which is responsible for blindness, isopropanol for deafness, and ethanol for drunkness. Now, if you want to think from halal point of view, apple, and take into consideration the list of those chemicals, it must be not halal. But apple in its nature is halal. And indeed, when we talk about toxicity, it's always determined by the dose. And this is the same applied for ethanol. Now, as a human, we always love to innovate. And then we can reproduce the apple flavor. And then we have in the end an artificial apple flavor. And then we can reproduce a set of a new new uh, food uh, products and probably one of this is an apple bread. Now if you look at this apple, it's not uh, apple bread, it's not anymore made from A to Z by our mother. Uh, it contains chemicals which is man-made. And in, in general, human is driven by by material value and its part of his goal is to make profit and to make his product irresistible. Therefore, here halal issue is a big concern and we have to let scientists to take part and identify or, 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 or evaluate if this apple bread is really halal for us or not. Now, what scientists do try to take 
to make use of the existing technology, for example, spectroscopy or chromatography, and try to evaluate and uh, look at the chemical composition and to see if it match halal standard or not. Now, if we if we can classify chemicals into small molecule and large molecule, micromolecule, macromolecule, so for micromolecule our concern mostly would be ethanol. Now, luckily ethanol can be easily um, it has a unique a unique uh, profile in gas chromatography, so we can compare it easily with other alcohol. When you look at the mass spectroscopy, it has a molecular weight of 46 uh, with, with, with a molecular formula C2H6O. And always the problem comes if there is any isomer which is carrying the same molecular weight and molecular formula. And luckily, to my knowledge, there is only one isomer to ethanol, which is dimethyl ether. And this compound is gas at room temperature. So we cannot detect like the ether at room temperature. If we detect something which has the same molecular weight, it has to be ethanol. And ethanol has a very unique uh, proton NMR with the three peaks, three different chemical shifts, and three integration. Now the complexity always goes when we go to macromolecule. Macromolecule means that we talk about DNA, fatty acids, proteins, carbohydrates, those molecules, they have a large molecular weight, so the numbers of isomers behave very similarly. So here in this case, we have to be more careful. Now, there is a possibility to make, for example, very sensitive tests like DNA test, and this test is frequently improved yearly, and probably one of the most interesting uh, tests which is uh, recently published by a Swedish uh, group, where they can detect the DNA from certain, from different sources uh, with the help of uh, paper chips. So here they use paper, which is very cheap. Paper is made from cellulose. And the most interesting, this test is very quick, and you can see and visualize the result by your naked eye. So you don't need an, uh, an instruments to find out whether really DNA is existing or not. You can see simply by your eyes and if you would like to quantify it, you just take a picture with normal uh, mobile camera. Anyway, when we talk about accuracy, and we would like always to improve accuracy for detection, in my opinion, always we have to focus on fingerprints. Fingerprints could be readers, fingerprints could be targets or regions. Now, we know from instruments or readers, infrared is an excellent fingerprint because it's very hard to find two compounds with an identical infrared spectroscope. Now, DNA is also a fingerprint which is used by police frequently, but DNA in general is not a very stable molecule because our DNA is always exposed to many exogenous and endogenous attacks, and this may lead to a mutation, and this may also lower the accuracy of the DNA test. So we should always think of another fingerprint source, another fingerprint source, and could be glycoprotein. And just like protein in general, if we just go to the cell membrane, um, on the cell surface, on the cell surface, um, usually you have a protein which is associated with carbohydrates and this protein carbohydrate is called the glycoprotein which play a big role or act as a recognition site and this recognition site is usually um, detected for example our white blood cell can differentiate our cell and foreign cell based on this um, carbohydrates uh, building blocks and interestingly, those carbohydrates, the expression of the carbohydrate on the cell surface is varied from species to species, from individual to individual, and from cell to cell in the same individual. And this diversity is because of the different monosaccharide building block. Therefore, I think if we can generate, if we can generate a compounds which can sense or detect 
polysaccharides in general, we may have an interesting tool to diagnose disease, disease at one part, and the second part we can use this test um, for our standard, uh, standard uh, approach. And I think with this type of technology we may have like three, three answers. We can detect pork from non-pork uh, meat. We can also uh, detect the standard health condition of the meat, even if it is halal. We can see if originally this animal was healthy or not. And I think because carbohydrate expression on the cell surface is highly influenced with the stress the body may have, maybe we could also be able to differentiate if this animal was loaded or not. Anyway, scientists, they start working in that direction, try to reproduce the so-called lectin limit. They design these molecules and they are testing them to target carbohydrates. In Switzerland, we are also interested in these fields. We are also generating those molecules based on boronic acids, which can covalently uh, coordinate with carbohydrates. This project is in between, and hopefully in the coming years we'll have more exciting uh, results to discuss in that direction. Anyway, there are still open issues with regard to halal. The technology of purification is always improving. Soon we'll have a problem to, to uh, know the source of the fatty acids and the gelatins, whether it's coming from uh, halal meat or not. And, and, and this will remain an open issue for us. And if you think from chemistry point of view, with a small molecule there is no problem because we can reproduce it in the lab. With big molecules like fatty acids and gelatins, it's difficult to make it in, in the lab. We always have to extract it from either animal or plants. And if we don't know the source, then it's very difficult to know the mother of this molecule. So far, in my opinion, the only solution we can follow is the traceability. Traceability means that we should allow the, the halal editors to go deep into the history of those compounds, to see the origin, how they are prepared, identified, and then documenting that.